name is Juliet and uh, I'm Yamini and this is Manat and I'm going to ask sir uh, a few questions about the film. Um, yeah. So, sir, uh, first off, congratulations that your film went to the Oscars. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great accomplishment. Mm. Uh, what I was interested in is the title of the film. How did that uh, come to being exactly? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, the title of the film, we are actually talking about how the film was made. Let's put it this yeah. way. Uh, I didn't have this title in mind at all. Uh, while I was shooting, as I said earlier, uh, around two weeks, three weeks down the line, I slowly tried to, fi I figured out that the film is going to be, you know, I'll be focusing more on these three girls in the, in, as part of the theatre group who will be um, auditioning or be, will be casted subsequently as Juliet slash Janani. So I started following them, you know, and uh, by the time, uh, and this was a process which kind of lasted for like uh, two and a half months, you know and I was shooting with them regularly and by the time I came to a closure I figured out that you know um, you know it's a, f a I'm actually following their journey yeah. their interpretation of the character of Juliet and that's why it became Janani's Juliet Janani is the character's name in the play yeah. so how is Janani interpreting Juliet Janani. so it's Janani's Juliet that way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's right. Yes. So, um, so we read in an interview and you mentioned that um, Kausalya's story uh, changed the course of the film. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Okay. Uh, um, see, uh, uh, while I was shooting uh, the Indian, uh, while I was shooting with Indian Ostrom, uh, uh, um, and they're devising this production, rehearsing this production, time and again, uh, as part of the improvisations, they would uh, mention Shankar and Kausalya you know and it was a infamous incident in Tamil Nadu uh, just I think a year or two before the uh, when I started filming and her name would constantly come up as part of improvisations the group had met her in person and somewhere deep down they were heavily inspired uh, by by the story uh, of Shankar and Kosalya uh, Back of my mind, I was very keen to meet her, but I didn't know when. I wasn't very sure about it. It so worked out that two months down the shoot, uh, uh, the director and and myself, director Vallavan Kumaran of Indian Astrum and myself, we decided that we'll go down and meet her. Sure. And uh, and it's strange. It was uh, we drove down overnight to just to meet her, and we barely managed to get like an hour with her and uh, and just that interview with her for 40 minutes it just changed the entire course i mean somewhere deep down uh, i always i kind of had i had started imagining that what indian Ostrom was doing uh, in the name of uh, romeo and juliet or whatever they were actually telling kosalya story i started believing that but once i met her you know deep in my mind it was it was actually her story which they were telling, you know. And so that became my kind of interpretation of the theatre production. If the actual theatre production is four hours long, it's Romeo and Juliet, they, they've called it Chandala. Yeah. And it's a proper theatre production with songs and dances and whatnot. And every part of Shakespearean script is part of the theatre production. Yeah. My film has got nothing to do with that. You know, we yeah. don't even get to know in the film <coughs> wha what the theatrical production was all about. Yeah. So it was my way of looking at, uh, at Janine's character and how these three girls uh, were interpreting it. And yeah. as I said, by the end of it, uh, uh, you know, for me, Kausalya and Janani, they all became one. one. You know, and that's how uh, once I had that realization, uh, I kind of extended that realization on the editing table. You know, and I have cut the film in a certain fashion. Yeah, yeah I would say, yeah. It's very appealing. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, as you said uh, in your film, it, it's not really about the actual theatre production, but their journey. Yeah. So, what I want to understand is what drew you towards documentary filmmaking. Uh, like in my understanding, many people, many filmmakers, they like the world because it, they can control everything, mm. the location mm. and mm. everything, the characters. Mm. But in documentary, uh, so, so what drew you towards documentary specifically? Well, I, uh, you're talking about my journey as a filmmaker or just this production? 
So, uh, because this in film general. could have been a biographical film as well, right? Yes, 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 yeah. Documentary in it. Why did I choose to make this as a documentary? Yeah. This Genesis Juliet. Yeah. Well, uh, as I said, uh, I was interested in the process what Indian Ostrom was going through. I yeah. wasn't interested <coughs> in the in the final play. Yeah. I had no interest at all sure. uh, because I knew they would do something interesting. Yeah. For me, the process of making films, making a theatrical production or any artwork is much more interesting than the final piece. Yeah. And uh, I was aware of the theatrical process because I had known them for years before I started shooting this play. Okay. You know, so I was interested in the process and I was keen to, to understand from them and from the cast members, how do they look at caste? Yeah. How do they look at love? It was that journey or their understanding of caste and love which I was interested in, in, in documenting. So I had these kind of, I had my frameworks worked out that, yeah. you know, I'm not interested in the subplots of Romeo and Juliet yeah. script and no, no, yeah. I'm not interested. I'm just going to focus on these two, three core areas. Yeah. And uh, with each passing day, uh, the ideas became sharper and sharper. There was much more clarity. Yeah. And, uh, and the only way to, uh, you know, get all this clarity or to, docu uh, to shoot it is to definitely go the, there is no other way but the documentary, yeah. you know, because we really don't know what's going to happen. I'm living on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. You know, every day the reality or the lived reality of these characters is changing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they are also evolving the, with the play. Mm -hmm. And so I'm also part of that journey and I am trying to document that journey. Yeah. You cannot do this in a fiction. <laughs> yeah. this, the only way is, is documentary. Okay. and. Uh, and that's why for me it is a very exciting form, you know. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen yeah. tomorrow and that excites me. Sure. Yeah. So since you followed the group for yeah. like a long period of time through the entire process and you are also an experienced filmmaker, did you give any inputs to the director of the play? or the actors or anything? <laughs> okay, um, one thing I would just like to share, uh, I've had a theatre background. Right. I did like, was active in theatre for like 10-12 years, which ended in with my college. And uh, so that's what actually fascinated me because somewhere what Wallavan and his group in Austin was doing was similar to what I used to do, yeah. you know. Um, plus, of course, the work, uh, you know, the, the, this particular theatre, uh, uh, you know, uh, production they were doing. So, it kind of, you know, eased out for me because sure. I know the process. Yeah. So, so, the way I figured out was I would become part of the group. Yeah. Instead of, you know, okay, the group is here and the camera is there. No, I'm sitting along with one of the actors and yeah. asking questions and the only thing is I have a camera in hand. Yeah. So I'm shooting and maybe I can just shoot like this or whatever, you know. So, I, but I must say it, 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 the compliment goes to the group sure. who were so, you know, open to this idea of me yeah. and they gave me access to that space. Yeah. You know, the theatre space is very private. Sure. We don't realize it. It's a very private space. You, yeah. you may be doing uh, Shakespeare and not any other play, but it's a mm. very private space. Yeah. But because I knew Valavan and a lot of the group members for a, for a long time, they trusted me yeah. and that was very important. So as part of the group discussion, I'm sitting there, I'm shooting and once in a while I would time in again. I would ask questions yeah. Yeah. and they were open to the idea. So, you, so what you see in the film, you don't know who's asked the question. Yeah. Was it the director or the actor? Yeah. You really don't know. Yeah. And uh, I wanted it to be that fluid so that yeah. the camera uh, becomes completely invisible you yeah. know so my yeah. days in theater helped me uh, to devise or shoot something like this yeah. and of course uh, Valavan and myself would talk you know okay. uh, yeah. because uh, he would uh, at times face awkward situations sure. and we would just we would you know we would talk about where the play is going and what are the possibilities mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, uh, I'll just give you a small example of how this group works. So, I shot with Kosalya, yeah. you know, I did that, met her for like hour and while we are driving back to Pondicherry, Valavan says, I think we should share this interview with the group. Okay. So, next day the entire 
interview is projected on the big screen and the yeah. group is listening yeah. getting a sense of you know they've met her but yeah. again they're getting a sense of and then there are initial reactions oh yeah. this 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 immediately bang on let's improvise yeah. and they improvise this scene which is there in the film mm. where the parents land up yeah. to Jenny's house yeah. and say you come back with mm. us mm. and when she refuses they say yes, okay mm. give us back the clothes and yeah. the chappals and everything mm. this is a incident which Kosalya narrated okay. and they improvise it then and there yeah. and this we are talking about you know your 20 days 15 days away from the from the final oh, wow. play yeah. and this <coughs> scene is improvised and it's it right. becomes part yeah. of the production yeah so you know it's a dynamic process and i like that sure. till the last minute you know this group yeah. keeps evolving yeah. so uh, and i won't be surprised that you know the the first show and the second show might be different <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, of course. It's, it's, it's that kind of a, so these uh, this this dynamic process excites me yeah you know and yes. uh, mm, and i was just waiting to uh, document all this yeah. you know yeah okay so, uh, sir, in the film, we have uh, Janani's character really question what Juliet was thinking or what, how she would react to a situation. So, this uh, gives us a certain feminist undertone to the entire film. So, okay. I mean, from, what, from sure, my interpretation. Sure. So, um, as a person who uh, was shooting this from a slightly feministic perspective, did you have any inhibitions uh, as a man yourself? Uh, did you have any inhibitions about showing this? Uh, sh showing the f film? Yeah. From, from like Kausalya's perspective. Yeah. Well, okay, you know, that was kind of inherent in the project. I realized, as I said, you know, I started shooting the group. And yeah. then, as I said, two <coughs> weeks down the line, I figured where I w wanted to focus. Yeah. And I wanted to focus on these three girls who had just joined the group. Okay. They were new to the group. Okay. So I was very keen to understand their journey. Sure. And how each, with each passing day, they were evolving with the group. Hmm how they were evolving individually, yeah. how their idea about caste, how their idea about, was, about love was yeah. changing as mm -hmm. the play was progressing. So I, uh, like I think every fortnight I did detailed interviews with them okay. where and it, the idea was to break the ice yeah. and uh, because they were the three people whom I was not familiar with, you okay. know, yeah. uh, uh, trust building exercise and they started sharing a lot of very personal details, you know, okay. uh, a lot of their thoughts that were going into Kausalya's character yeah. in their mind. And for me, that was the meat. Okay. That was the meat. And, and all these questions which they had about Kausalya's character and the situation, that all went into the telephonic conversation subsequently okay. because yeah. they, I made them ask these questions to Kausalya. Sure. Okay. You know, when and you have this telephonic conversation happening throughout the thing, you know. Sure. So, yes, uh, uh, my uh, perspective or understanding was always from what, what is happening in Kosalya's mind, yeah. what is happening uh, in the mind of three, these three girls, girls. you know, yeah. what, are, yeah. what, is, what are they going through in, sure. them, in the head. And uh, that's what I was keen to uh, just shoot, sure. yeah. yeah. Okay, so the the feminist undertone and everything it was unintentional no 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 it was it was it was very well planned definitely but uh, to the extent that uh, let's put it this way you know um, if uh, this film could have ended uh, when Kosalya says that uh, uh, you know that the the father and the other people have been convicted but she is not okay right. she has challenged the verdict in high court because the mom has been left out right and the mom is the biggest culprit and things like that. Now, I could have just ended the film over there. It's the end, end of a story. But mm. uh, when I did that on the, on the editing table, I said, no, this mm. is like a very activist kind of a story which mm. I'm not interested in. Yeah. And that made me really think, so what is this film about? Right. And I figured uh, this film is about love. It's not about caste for me. Yeah. And so, so I added the last bit you know, where, okay, Juliet's chamber, let her go mm. to sleep. And then sure. these lines come, you know, Jack, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, because uh, love definitely is, is, is something for me, definitely superior to caste. And mm -hmm. as Valavan and, and the group and myself, uh, you know, uh, in the group discussions, uh, Valavan's take was always is, was that love has the power to overcome, mm -hmm. win over caste. Yeah. 
not the other way around. Right. Yeah. So I figured out, okay, that's my calling. It has, it's a film about love and yeah. it has to end with love, sure. you know. And ending with love now, you can call it a feminist tone mm. or I don't know, <laughs> you know, but uh, that's how it worked out for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Mm. Yeah, but uh, there is a focus on, you know, caste issues and, you know, honor killings and mm. the film is getting a lot of attention, mm. critical acclaim, Oscar mm. buzz. So what do you feel about that then when it's getting focus on that particular issue? Well, I mean, in the film, I didn't know what's gonna happen. I mean, uh, I didn't have any of these things in mind when I was editing the film or making the film. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of surprised when it just caught, when it caught the buzz and True. everything. True. Yeah, it's good for the film, you know, uh, and I'm happy about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it, it is what it has only meant is that you know it has been widely screened now across yeah. the country, yeah. and it's not a film which is you know it's it's not sensational. It is not uh, something to watch out. You know, keep yourself guarded whether we should see this film or not. It's it it uh, you know. So that's why uh, everybody, uh, all online forums, schools, colleges are keen to you know have a look at this film. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, sir, one final question. Um, w according to you, what should our takeaway be from this film? Your takeaway? Yeah, an audience from an audience. Believe in love. What love. else? There's nothing else to believe yeah. in. It will just uh, you believe in love. It will. It's uh, it's the answer to all problems. I can assure you that. Okay. Yeah. Great lines <laughs> <laughs> to end on. No questions. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, so I really appreciate the interview. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, maybe some questions from the sure, sure. Let's go ahead. Uh, I yeah. Yes, I have a question. Uh, congratulations uh, for this beautiful film, and uh, it was uh, selected for Oscar official entry from India. So I, I'm from Rad Times. My name is Mujahid Siddiqui, uh -huh. the official uh, media partner for the uh -huh. film Oscar. So uh, my question is. Uh, uh, what was the idea of editing this film? I mean, uh, I believe that that film uh, must be uh, made as a feature film, okay, feature documentary. So I thought, uh, I mean, uh, you tried to make, this, uh, make it as a short documentary. Well, it was commissioned yeah. for a 53 minute <coughs> film. Okay. So that's what I did. I mean, I had, uh, uh, so I had to do a 53 minute version. And finally, uh, I mean, the, my producers uh, uh, do allow to make longer films, you know. But uh, after the cut, I realized there's not much that I would like to add on to this project, you know. So I kind of stuck to the brief, which was a 53-minute film, and that was it. Yeah. And I believe that that uh, subject uh, deserves a feature documentary. I mean, you can. See well, uh, let me tell you, all subjects. Everything on this planet deserves a shot and a feature yeah. and a middle length. Do you take the interviews of real victim, family or... Mm, see, I, I, the real victim was Kosalya herself, okay. you know. And for me, the buzz just stopped over there. In fact, uh, uh, I mean, since you're talking about editing, by the time I met her, this was like two months down the shoot, I had no clue what the film is going to shape like. I had absolutely no idea. I knew I was shooting something. I was enjoying the process and it's only after I shot with her, you know, that interview or that meeting with her, by the time that meeting ended, I knew what the structure of this gonna film is going to be and it was one of the easiest projects to edit for, you know, whatever I've done in life, this was the easiest to edit because, because I think the kind of clarity what Kosalya brought to the project, which was not playing a victim. That was the best part. She did not play the victim's card at all. I mean, in my worldview. And for me, that was heartening. And, and that kind of defined the edit for me. Yeah. Any other? Uh, so yeah, sure, go ahead. I'm also from Rad Times. And oh. This is the second year that we are the media partner for Film First Cut. Uh, I'm also with Pune Theatre Guide. Hmm. So, so uh, the playwright in the, play, uh, in the film says that Shakespeare, anybody can do it, you know. Mm. That's a very empowering and freedom like because you're opening up your text to everyone. But whereas now, if you look at theatre groups like the company Theatre yeah. and Rajat Kapoor's yes. and also Royal Shakespeare Company, mm. 
they have a very closed approach, you know. So is this a communal approach to texts when you are trying to do theatre? Uh, I mean Shakespeare, basically. Well, I would say uh, uh, um, for Indian Ostrom, it has always been a very communal approach, yeah, you know. Because they are very located in the community. Yeah, and, and also uh, whatever, uh, uh, see, this was, I think, maybe one of the first productions that I know of there, they actually took a text and they said, let's work around it. Otherwise, most of the time, you know, they have they have images, they have sounds, and and those become the starting point for improvisations or some text. You know, they uh, do not have these classical scripts in front of them at all. Uh, so their entire approach is is very different. You know, for example, the way the group works, uh, and especially Walawan, he doesn't believe in language. And when I say that, what I mean is that. Uh, one actor could be speaking English, the other one spe could be speaking Hindi, the third person could be speaking Tamil and they would improvise like that all the time. And it's very clear to the actors and to the audience what is being said, you know. So there is, uh, there is of course the power of language but there is always also the power of how, how, what are you saying and how you are saying it. You know, of course if you know the language you will enjoy that, the production much more. Uh, but if you do not know the language, even then, the theatrical production works, you know. And this is something which, which the group has done time and again, you know. And in this uh, play also, what they were doing, uh, there was uh, uh, not everybody was comfortable, uh, not everybody knew Tamil, majority knew, but there was, I think, one, uh, one girl, she did not know a word of Tamil at all. She was from Assam, you know. And there was this one girl from France, of course, for her, you know, even... Uh, you know, English was kind of alien, you know, but they all worked it out and seamlessly, seamlessly without any effort because I think theatre um, has its uh, a very uh, a language of its own which is very different and once you are in the right mindset, it's not difficult to communicate after a point, okay? I think that's <coughs> so. Okay, Thank thanks you. a lot. Thank you so much for the invite. Yeah.